This is The Caden Show with your host, Jay Caden. Ominous music today, Wednesday, November 2nd. We have a reason for this ominous music. Today's show is going to blow your head off with some information that is just remarkable. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world today. Uh, As always with me, uh, my name, of course, Jay Caden, is none other than Mick the Boogeyman Mm. and the lovely Steph. (laughs) That would be (laughs) Stephanie, for those of you who cannot understand that. Uh, Later on in the show, we have Field McConnell. Now, Field McConnell, for those of you who don't know who Field McConnell is, and if you read anything online and you come across something that's deep and smart, intelligent, well-researched, backed up with background and actual something. Hey, hey, Mickey, there's something that's lacking nowadays. It's called references. Wait a minute. I, I used to know that word. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is, is something, something to do with hunting deer hunting season? There, there that was it. No. Yeah. Is that okay? He, ha- you know, this guy, when you come across something on the Internet, that just blows your mind, but you can't escape it because it's backed up by fact and sources. Check the credits. It might have something to do with Field McConnell. Um, I won't tell you his background and what he does, but I, I will tell you it's exciting because it's right up my alley. Actually, I think we have. I think we have oh. Field here. Field, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, oh, no. F- fantastic. Okay, Yay! I had to run into the production booth just to <laughs> to make this work. Uh, <laughs> It's like, what is going on? I'm going to fire everybody in there. That's it. It's over. Field, how are you, buddy? I'm, I'm just fine. What can I do for you today? So I wanted to talk with you um, about uh, this situation with Hillary Clinton. Now, Able Danger, Able Danger, A-B-E-L Danger dot net, um, has an article published Monday, October 31st. And by the way, thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, Insiders threaten to expose Hillary's pedophile sex ring. Whew. What can you tell us? Wow. Well, I can tell you I exposed that uh, on the 21st of August, uh, 2014, in Ellsworth County Court in Ellsworth, Wisconsin. And last night I called the 46th precinct of the New York uh, Police Department and talked to whoever answered the phone, and they couldn't tell me who was investigating Hillary and Homa, and they directed me to call New York City Police Department uh, Investigations Branch, which I did, but of course I was calling them late at night, and apparently they don't monitor their phone, so I left a message, uh, and when they didn't answer, I left them a very polite message with very brief details, my name, my phone number, fact that on the 21st of August of 2014, I exposed this uh, this pedophile ring in open court in Ellsworth, Wisconsin. And I said, uh, in addition to the name Huma Abedin and Hillary Clinton, you're missing the kingpin, who's my own sister, Christine Marcy. And I'll spell that for your listeners. K-R-I-S-T-I-N-E. First name, Christine. Second name, Marcy. M-A-R-C-Y. Uh, and if if anybody in Montana thinks that I'm being unkind to my sister, I would have you think back 15 years or so to when Ted Kaczynski got turned over by members of his own family. And I believe that Ted was living in Montana at the time. So hopefully your listeners would be uh, somewhat familiar with a scenario where a good uh, family member exposes an evil family member. And not during the nature of your show, I don't know if you like talking about good and evil from a Christian perspective, but I'm very flexible and I can talk on any level you want. Go ahead. You and I did not get much of a chance to, just for our listeners' sake, they're going, what what is going on? We didn't get much time to talk today before uh, when we scheduled this interview. Um, But uh, there are, I, I did know who you were already. Before we go, I want to go back to exactly what you said. And if you have time, and I'd like to just ask you now, do you have time to stay over our, our, our break that we do at the top of the hour? Can you come into the next, starting into the next hour also with us? 
Yes, I certainly can. Oh, okay, good. I just I wanted to know that so I wasn't rushing. Okay, uh, my phone is already blowing up with people texting me. In fact, by the way, um, okay. Before we get into that, I want to I want to just briefly, if you don't mind, and if you don't want to, just tell me. I, I want people to know who you are. I mean, you were in the United States Naval Academy. You're a forensic economist. You're an airline pilot, a military pilot. You're not a schmuck. Tell us about you. Let's talk about you for a minute. Okay, and I will tell you every. There's no question you can ask me that I will uh, defer on. What is the uh, have, What is the Powerball lottery number going to be? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I was I was born into a strategic air command family before there was a strategic air command. My father was a career Air Force pilot. My mother was a World War II Army nurse who, when my father is a POW from World War II, was returned. My mother, the Army nurse, nursed him back to health. Uh, they produced two kids, myself and my sister, Christine Marcy. I've served the United States of America from uh, the 28th of June of 1967 when I entered Annapolis. Uh, four years there, then six years in the Marine Corps, where I was an aviator or a pilot. And then 16 years in the North Dakota Air National Guard. And at the Air National Guard, my uh, military specialty was air defense interceptor pilot. So when the events of 9-11 came along on September 11, 2001, I had already been working as an airline pilot for 13, let me think about that, 22 years. And I had been uh, retired from the military where I flew F-16s uh, most recently in North Dakota. Previous to that, I flew the F-4 Phantom for uh, 13 years. But my my real story, uh, the, the story of Field McConnell, the person you're interested in, really started on 9-11 when I knew uh, for sure that we as the American people were being lied to because on the evening news, I saw a piece up in Fargo, North Dakota that said three of our F-16s had been scrambled off Langley Air Force Base, Virginia, at 0932 in the morning on 9-11, and I knew that that was impossible without foreign knowledge because you always have three aircraft on alert, but you only have two pilots. So you have two crews, and if, if they're single-piloted airplanes like nowadays with F-16s and F-15s, you have two pilots, two uh, three aircraft, and then you have another pair of pilots that's on um, rest. 24 hours on, 24 hours off. I'll leave it at that. But my connections to 9-11 are triplicate. Uh, number one, my Air National Guard unit, the North Dakota Air National Guard, uh, was deployed to Langley Air Force Base near Norfolk, Virginia. They responded to the Pentagon. Um, captain Charles Chick Burlingame, the captain of American 77, uh, went to college with me, and he was a Navy F-4 pilot who then flew for American. And I was a uh, Air National Guard F-4 pilot who was currently at that time flying for Northwest. Uh, my third connection to 9-11 involves Hillary and my sister, Christine Marcy. Now, many of your listeners, I presume, know that the official narrative of 9-11 is nothing but uh, hogwash. However, uh, a lot of people think either the Muslims did it or the U.S. government did it, and neither party would be correct. It was a hybrid of international and traitorous uh, Americans. But two of the traitorous Americans involved in 9-11 were my sister, once again, Christine Marcy, K-R-I-S-T-I-N-E, and Hillary Clinton. Now, now she, was, she, was a, she, was a, she was a NAPA chair, is that right? NAPA chair of the FBI Procurement Services? She was a lot of things. She was a, she was a jack of, or in this case, a Jill. She was a jack of all trades and master of nothing. She's never done a thing in her life. She's a lot like this guy that claims he's Barack Obama, who he's not. His name is Barry Swatero, S-O-E-T-O-R-O. -O. He went to my high school, Punahou School in Honolulu, Hawaii. I graduated in 67. Barry Swatero graduated in 79. He's been posing as Barack Obama. My own sister, Christine Marcy, gave him his passport in 1994. At that time, she was in one of her many hats she wore while I... Whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down here. Slow down here. Okay. You're Where saying... I, I didn't, no, just because just I don't want people to lose you, and I want to hear okay. this. I want to hear this. Um, slow that down and say that one more time. She... 
And we got a break, by the way, coming up here in just a couple minutes. But you're saying, you're saying your sister gave quote unquote Barack Obama, I like to call him Barry Davis, uh, Barack Obama his passport in 1994? Yes, that's correct. Okay, go, uh, go on from there. Yeah, and so I've got a relationship with Barack Obama. I have a relationship with John McCain, who's equally treasonous. On 9-11, my relationships involved the F-16s that were scrambled out of Langley Air Force Base at 0932. Uh, my relationship on 9-11 was the captain of American 11, Captain Chick Burlingame. Neither he nor his aircraft hit the Pentagon. Oh, and no, that, no, no way. Yeah, there's no way. Yeah, well, I can tell you exactly where it went. It went to a military airspace called Whiskey 386 Alpha Airspace, and it was destroyed with this premeditated murder. Uh, but don't let me run into your ad and go ahead and ask me anything else you want. Yeah, no, don't no, no. I, 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 I w- <laughs> well, <laughs> we, uh, I anticipated having you on here to talk about the Hillary situation, but I'm willing to go anywhere you want to go, buddy. Let me tell you that. Uh, we are going to a break here in 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 just about a minute. Uh, we're okay for now. I mean, we we got a couple more seconds here. Um, okay, so I guess our topic range just increased for today. We were going to talk about Hillary. I do want to I want to make sure that we do cover this uh, email scandal, quote unquote, with uh, these this pedophile ring. I want to hit on Jeffrey Epstein, Bill Clinton, Anthony Weiner, Huma Abedin, Hillary Clinton. I want to hit on all that. I tell you what, let's do. We're going to go to the break. When we come back from the break, let's 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 hit on the email things. I think we can get to that pretty quickly, and then let's come back to this nine eleven because I'm always a nine eleven person, and we can. We can then let this ride as long as it needs to ride. Does that sound all right with you? That's fine. Anything is fine. It's your show. I'll do what I can. Well, but you're my guest, and I have to be hospitable. Okay, so we'll be right (laughs) back. You're welcome. (laughs) Thanks for being our guest. This is Jay Caden on The Caden Show, Revealing Talk Radio, The Radio Revolution. If you leave, we're going to the news. If you, the listeners, leave, you're nuts. Stay right there. Our wonderful guest here during the break. And what we've decided to do is what, we, what I was implying. We're going to talk about the emails. And then when we're good and done with that, however long that takes, we're going to then move on to, we're going to go back to this 9-11. Because I have about 634 million questions to ask about this. <laughs> so, uh, Field, uh, t- t- take, us, uh, take us back. I'm looking at this article right now, okay? Breaking bombshell, FBI, NYPD, insiders leak email scandal about to take a sick and twisted turn. Tell us what it's about. It's about the glue which holds the international evil cabal together. Most of your listeners around the world, and I noticed you said um, you said Ecuador, and I'm going to change that to Honduras, and you said Liberia. I'm going to change that to Liberia. I want your listeners in Liberia to know that two years ago, I bought two water wells in Liberia because mothers and young children were dying from bad water, and we supported. And that's the second poorest nation in the world. Uh, as it pertains to Honduras, I think anyone in the United States who's thinking of voting needs to know that Tim Kaine, the VP that was bought and paid for by the Clinton Foundation, um, used to be down in Honduras where he spent a whole lot of time with young males. However, you wanted to talk about email, so let me tell you that the email disclosure um, it's coming from a lot of different places. Uh, the NYPD is saying that they just happen to be looking at Anthony Weiner's uh, email account because of his sexting, S-E-X-T-I-N-G, with a 15-year-old girl uh, in the southeastern U.S. So he's communicating across state lines in a felonious manner. And they claim that that's how they first found out about Hillary and Huma. Uh, they can claim that. And they may believe it, but I, I personally don't believe it. I think that Able Danger helped, and Able Danger is a group around the world also. I'm not in our chat room right now, but I can assure you we've got people listening in New Zealand, Australia, Japan, uh, 
Western Europe, all of us, uh, the United States, Canada, of course. Uh, but we've got not only listeners everywhere, but we've got associates everywhere that if something happened, for instance, if Hillary Clinton would burp in a restaurant in New York City, we'd probably know within 60 seconds. Okay, now, but, now, uh, now, Field, let me cut, Field, 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 I'm not emotional about this at all. And field, let me cut you off. Let me cut you off for just a second. Um, yeah. I want you to hang okay. up. I want you to hang up the connection we have. I'm going to call you back on the phone because you're getting really gargly, and I want to make oh, sure fine. people are hearing what you're saying. So just go okay. ahead and hang up anytime you want, and and I'll I will call you on your phone. Here I am. Okay, Field. Sorry about all that. We just had a really poor connection with but before. Okay, so at this point, um, because I had to go to this this direction, you will not be able to hear my co-host, but they're they're aware of that. So it'll just be you and I right now. Um, so pick up, pick up where you were, you were saying you, that, and I want to actually, you know what I want to do? I want to draw you right back to it. Tell our listeners, first of all, there's six, it's not 650,000 emails, people. It's 662,871. Do you think they don't know what's going on? They know the exact number. Um, emails, that, those are the ones lifted from Anthony Weiner's computer. 11,112 of these emails were Huma, Huma Aberdeen's and pay to play, including Saudis and Israelis. Um, tell our listeners what the real big stinker is in the folder called intimate. Was that a question? Yeah. What is in what, what, what photos were they worried about? What is in there? Um, I, I guess I didn't follow the question. Are you talking about what's the uh, smoking gun in these emails? Yes. Uh, my my opinion is the smoking gun in the emails is some photographs of Hillary, and I've got to, I remember this is G-rated, but Hillary, Huma, and an underage female involved in a what the French would call a menage a trois. So these are X-rated photos, and the way I understand it is Anthony Weiner lifted these basically from his wife's computer, being the pervert he is. And he put mm -hmm. them on his computer. Have I got that right? Yes. And then uh, it appears that Uma Wiener had a lot of them in a file she called life insurance because she knew the true nature of the Clinton killing machine. Does this all tie into Jeffrey uh, Epstein? Um, just before you lost me on Skype, I was going to let you and your listeners know that it's my opinion after 10 years of this, that the glue that holds the international evil cabal together is pedophilia, because whether someone is of a, what would be called for G rating, a normal lifestyle, or once again, just to keep it G rated, an abnormal lifestyle, it doesn't matter. Uh, people get extorted and entrapped when they are videotaped doing things they don't want their brother, sister, mother, uh, parents, uncles, aunts, or the public to know. And uh, it appears that the real smoking gun in these emails that the New York City Police Department has used to force the FBI, that's my opinion, I believe NYPD forced FBI to reopen it. Uh, the FBI, I I believe is like any other government organization. The 98% of the people at the bottom are good and try hard, but they're controlled and constrained by people at the top. Now, I'm going to give you a name of a bureaucracy that is significant in the containment and the control. And I doubt, don't feel bad. I don't think you've ever heard of the United States Senior Executive Service, have you? No, I have not. Well, I want your listeners all around the world to Google United States Senior, S-E-N-I-O-R, Executive Service, and know before you Google it that my own sister, Christine Marcy, was asked by then-President Jimmy Carter to come up with the Senior Executive Service, and if there's two uh, entities in the United States of America that are the most uh, disastrous as it pertains to any semblance of a constitutional republic, 
and the rule of law by elected officials doing their jobs. Those two entities are the United States Senior Executive Service, which are nothing but a bunch of traitors, treason practitioners. The other is a company that most of your listeners never would have heard of. It's the biggest corporation that most people have never heard of. It's British. The name of the corporation is Serco, S-E-R-C-O. They control our entire military. They control many of our bureaucracies. And uh, Mr. Caden, you sound very well informed. Um, Has it ever crossed your mental radar that perhaps the United States of America has been operating as a colony since uh, 1871? Virginia Corporation, absolutely. Well, yes, and also, and I'm going to say this very slowly, uh, the organic, O-R-G-A-N-I-C, the Organic Act of 1871 is the line in the sand where any semblance of the United States being sovereign vanished. And we've been a colony. Uh, We've been operated by, first of all, my wife is English. So when I say the evil Brits, I'm talking about a very extreme super minority of English people. Now, you're talking about the District of Columbia Organic Act of 1871. Yes, yes, you could Google that. Yeah, ironically, ironically, the Queen, apparently, uh, well, not ironically, the Queen is obviously the House of Windsor, supposedly. The Bush family is part of the House of Windsor. So yeah. none of this surprises me. And yes, I'm absolutely in Now, I think and in, in off air, I'm going to I don't want to do it now because it take too much time. But off air, I'm going to talk to you about the significance of March 9th, 1933 um, and, and what that did to further this. But, yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I'm with you 100 percent. I'm well aware of the truth about our our quote unquote sovereignty. Okay, good. And earlier I mentioned the name of a state, which I will not repeat, but just so your listeners don't think that I thought anything good or bad about the state, which I'm not going to repeat, when I Googled your name briefly, I saw a lot of the states where you have a lot of listeners, uh, and I just picked one because it's fairly close uh, to where I am. I'm 60 miles southeast of Minneapolis in a little village called Plum City, Wisconsin. But even though it's a small village, um, and I'm going to say something First of all, I appreciate your very serious demeanor because this is serious. And I probably am the most humorous, serious person you'll ever meet or the most serious comedian you'll ever meet. I find smiling to be much more restorative health-wise than crying. But, you know, I cry every day for our nation. And when I say I cry every day for the United States, I hope nobody around the world thinks I'm jingoistic or nationalistic. I'm not. I've traveled the world. Uh, You asked me to introduce myself. Stay stay right there. We're going to a break in eight seconds. Stay right there. You're listening to The Cadence Show on Revealing Talk Radio. Our guest is Field McConnell. Don't go anywhere. Um, Okay, Field, we've got you back on that uh, prior connection. I'm hoping this audio works for everyone out there listening. Um, Okay, pick up right where you left off, buddy. Talk about anything you want to talk about at this point. Go right ahead. Okay, well, where, what were we talking about when we uh, got sidetracked? Do you recall? If not, I'll go back, and I know it was related to the emails. Well, I mean, we've got these, we've got these, uh, we've got these, 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 we've got these. Uh, I hate to say, X-rated emails with Hillary. Uh, I did talk on. I, I touched on Jeffrey Epstein, and the reason why is he has an island, in St. James, where Clinton has been on Jeffrey's plane twenty-six times. We know some of that was. Clinton, or when I say Clinton, I mean Bill, going to Jeffrey Epstein's island, which there's only one purpose to go to that island, and that is lewd, um, pedophile. Pedoph- yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm really struggling with this. Um, and now we know that we have, uh, we already know who Anthony Weiner is. He's a creep. Um, and and the thing about him is I love how the news media goes, the alleged, he allegedly did this. He put it on his own Twitter for crying out loud. There's no alleging anything. He did it, okay? Um, we have uh, 
Uma, who maybe you know about this. And maybe she asked you about this. You know her background, right? Who she supports, what she's all about. You know about Huma? Yes, I do. I know the Saudi Arabian mm-hmm. connection. I know mm-hmm. she went to a British school for girls. Correct. Uh, yep, 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 yep. She's, and, she supports, yeah. she supports uh, quote unquote, you know, radical Islamic terrorism. Her family uh, are directly related and leaders of the Muslim Brotherhood. That's it. Yeah, that was the one I was looking for. The Muslim Brotherhood. Yeah, you and I are on the same page, buddy. And then we've got Hillary, whose daughter Chelsea and her father, Webb Hubble. Um, and Hillary was, shall we say, bed partners with uh, Webb and the late Vince Foster, who's the only suicide in the history of the world to shoot himself on the ground, and there was no blood, no blood, no bullet, no 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 skull fracture fragments, nothing. There's this this guy we covered today earlier. I don't know if you were listening to the show, but or no, it wasn't earlier today. I said I was going to cover it today. Um, we've got six six recent deaths all associated with Hillary. You've got uh, Seth Rich from the DNC who leaked things to WikiLeaks. You've got um, uh, Montano. What was his first name? Mark Montano? I can't remember his name. Uh, Chairperson of the DNC. He suddenly decides to have a heart attack the day of the DNC starting their convention. You've got um, the guy who was suing Hillary and the DNC served them secretly recorded the video recording of him serving them papers. He find his girlfriend finds him dead on his bathroom. You've got, uh, 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 what's his name? The author. Um, Oh man, forget Victor Thorne, uh, writing a book about Hillary. It'd be his seventh book about the Clintons. He winds up dead. He decides to go up to a mountaintop right next to his house on his birthday and shoot himself. Apparently, um, not a chance. You've got um, the former, uh, what's his name? Let's see. Um, what is his name? Oh, right. Uh, I remember now. Um, uh, the former UN president, John Ash, accidentally crushes his own throat while working out. Uh, he was about to have to testify against Clinton involving a $4.5 billion dollar uh, uh, shady uh, investment by, or not investment, donation by a Chinese businessman, uh, Lapsing. And then we have Julian Assange's oh. attorney who just threw himself in front of a train. Now, ironically, here's something interesting, and I want to get your take on this field. John, I think his name is, uh, what was his name? Uh, I wrote it down. I wrote it down and I do do uh, John, uh, John, is it John Jones? I think his name is John Jones is the attorney for uh, Julian Assange. He worked with George Clooney's wife. George Clooney is a Knight of Malta. Are you aware of that field? Yes. And his wife's name is Umal. U-M-A-L. Yeah. Umal. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So here's this guy who decides to throw himself in front of a train it's ironic how these things happen, isn't it? Um, it this 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 smells of Arkansas, which I call them. They're not suicides; they're called Arkansides. Um, this is Arkansas and uh, 1992 to 2000 all over again. What's I your- couldn't agree more. And can I offer a Google search for some of your uh, listeners who are not familiar with me to Google at this point? Please go right ahead. I'll do it while you're I'll, go yeah, right ahead. Why don't you see if, let me give you about four things to Google and see if anything comes up. I think it will. Uh, 14 February 1967. So we want 14 February 1967 plus oath O-A-T-H, plus Hunter, H-U-N-T-E-R, Harris, H-A-R-R-I-S, plus Field McConnell. See if anything comes up. That's all in one search, right? Yes. 
Okay. Uh, the 14th I... of February of 67. Yeah. O-T-H, Hunter? Is that what you said? Yeah. Oh, it's, oh, no, no. Four different things. In fact, I should probably be doing this, but I give up bandwidth when I Google. Yeah, don't do uh, it. Yeah. Yeah, but it, on, on the 14th of uh, February of 1967, when I was a high school senior at Punahou School in Honolulu, my father was at the Pacific Air Force headquarters in at Hickam Air Force Base, and Hunter H. Harris was a four-star general, and uh, he got me into the Naval Academy in a dishonest fashion, which I didn't recognize at the time, but I do now. Uh, but he encouraged me not to surrender my integrity, integrity, and he also told me to keep my eyes on Arkansas. I had no idea what that meant at the time, but I've been watching Arkansas, and what I see in Arkansas is the Rockefeller family. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Bill Clinton is a Rockefeller, and uh, his sire, uh, in other words, the male who provided the DNA for his uh, conception, was Winthrop Rockefeller Sr., the first governor, the first Rockefeller governor of Arkansas. Uh, later, his son, Winthrop Rockefeller Jr., was another uh, Rockefeller governor of Arkansas. He's, uh, he died, I think, just of natural causes. But see, with the, with the Clintons, you never know who's who without a program. Bill Clinton is a Rockefeller. Hillary Rodham was the daughter of the mafia boss in Chicago that took over when uh, Al Capone disappeared. John, uh, not, that's not the right word, Rost, Dan Rostenkowski and uh, Hugh Rodham took over the Chicago mob. So all you get when you take a look at the Clinton Foundation is you get remnants of the mafia mixed with remnants of an immoral group of Rockefellers. Yeah, and and um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's one of those moments when my head just exploded because <laughs> well, there was there was like the fifth, there was fifty things I wanted to say at once, and it all was going to come out like blah, 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 blah. I I couldn't say anything. <laughs> um, yeah, the the uh, I I had thought for such a long time that uh, Clinton Bill rather was. A Rockefeller. I talked to someone today who swears up and down that it's is he's actually George Bush's son, uh, George Bush Sr. I, I I struggled with it. I struggle with it. I've always been convinced he was a Rockefeller. Arkansas is a Rockefeller state. Uh, Mina Airport is all about China White or was for years. Uh, yeah, it, it's the corruption. You know, I I love how people go. Even the people that think they're informed, they say, "Oh, those Clintons are so corrupt." Well, no, they're just doing how they're just, they're, you know, they're just keeping on the family legend. That's all. I mean, it's, they're not, they're not the kingpins. They're not the puppet masters. They're themselves a puppet, you know, puppets for profit, but they're, they're puppets. You know, I mean, I told a friend the other day, I said, I said, why don't you just Google web Hubble and then look at Chelsea? And she's had at least three plastic surgeries, by the way, to try to reduce the lip and the chin. This is not a joke, Mick. I'm serious. I just... <laughs> Poor Mickey's losing it. Uh, well, you know, what do you think about getting back to Jeff Epstein? Oh, please. Oh, my goodness. We can go all day on that. Yeah, go right ahead. In 1982, he was given $1 billion. By whom? By some uh, Jewish businessmen. And I'm not racist or uh, I'm not concerned with someone's faith. But, well, no, uh, and I'm and I'm very careful to make sure that people understand, and I'm adamant yes. about this, and I could go on forever. Jews are not behind it, okay? Jews yeah. are pawns. You look at George Soros; he's a pawn. I don't. These people that just sit here, and I don't know how you feel feel about this field because we haven't, we've never talked before. But I, I, I could go on for hours and hours and hours talking about examples where. Jews have been used to be the bad guy. They're an easy target. It's so brilliant. I mean, look at uh, um, look at uh, Gold, uh, not Goldman Sachs, uh, Lehman Brothers. You know, I I compl- I was one of the people that helped uncover what really happened at Lehman Brothers, and we tried reaching out to the you know the Jew running that, and he wouldn't. He he never got back to us. But it, it's it, Jews are very very easily categorized as being behind everything. 
that is not that they're usually pawns or sellouts. They're they're patsies. They're all that. But anyway, go ahead. That's you, Field. Go ahead. Yeah, they are pawns and patsies, and uh, as long as we're yeah, speaking of words that start with J, uh, Jesuits, which is a super minority of the Catholic faith, they are, have uh, done a lot of this Jew bashing. Now, what he's, and, now, what, fe- course, now what Field is talking about is the Society of Jesus, okay? This is where IHS really comes in. The Jesuits are absolutely behind most of what's going on. IHS means Isis, Horus, Set. Hmm, interesting. Isis, hmm, huh, coincidence, I'm sure. Uh, the Jesuits are absolutely behind most of this stuff. I mean, you look at Peter Hans, Hans Kolbenbach's involvement in 9/11. He was the Jesuit. They call him. The, they call him the, the the Jesuit general is called the Black Pope. Go ahead, Field. Yeah, and also while we're talking about Jesuits, we need to consider the possibility. You ask about Uma Abedin and Saudi Arabia. We need to take a look at are Saudi Arabian uh, nationals Muslims and Arabs, or are they something else? I'll leave that as an open question. But keep in mind that uh, about the time of Lawrence of Arabia, when England or the United Kingdom was establishing a foothold and therefore control in Saudi Arabia, uh, they also were forming uh, Israel in 1948. And they, what they do is they create all of these factions to be pitted against each other so the real people controlling the world are never exposed and they don't care. It's sort of like a horse race. Uh, these people will create eight different horses and give them eight different bright colors to run around the track. And whether they, whether the horse wins or is euthanized, it doesn't matter. The people controlling the horses who are not Jews, uh, they make windfall profits. They've been controlling the world and they probably would have gone on controlling the world if the Clinton family hadn't been such abject failures at uh, minding, uh, their P's and Q's, but the Clintons sort of, it's sort of like in football season now. It's sort of like a celebration before you get in the end zone. Uh, Hillary and Bill Clinton have been celebrating for a long time and yet they're not even in the red zone. And uh, this goes back to the FBI and the emails. Uh, I did make a, I started to make a comment earlier about the New York Police Department forcing the FBI's hand. But keep in mind that what's happening in October, November of 2016 was leaked in a courtroom in Ellsworth, Wisconsin on the 21st of August of 2014. And it was leaked by me when I exposed the pedophile network that now is bubbling to the surface. And uh, I, at the risk of sounding like a raving lunatic, I have published already my opinion that at the 11th hour, the election slated for the 8th of November may be rescheduled for the 3rd of January of 2017 for a multiplicity of reasons, one of which is Hillary Clinton may not be free to serve, if you get my drift. No, no, I want my listeners to hear what you mean by that. Go ahead. Well, I think she could be uh, in custody. Uh, Have you heard anything recently, like in the last 48 hours, have you heard of any public people seeing Huma Abedin on the street in New York, or have you... No, she is She is gone. She is gone. Well, you want to know where she went? Please tell me. I think she went to Mount Weather. I'll spell that, M-O-U-N-T-W-E-A-T-H-E-R, Mount Weather, Virginia. It is an emergency operations center for the United States federal government, so if we were attacked by a foreign... Mm-hmm. And- mm-hmm. Yep, yep, I'm familiar with that. Well, this is... This is where the shadow government was going to go on 9-11, had the fourth aircraft not be, had, had it not been delayed 41 minutes at Newark, the shadow government, which would include my sister, Christine Marcy, Hillary Clinton, John McCain, uh, Lieberman, uh, Graham, uh, Lindsey Graham, those types of reprobates, they would have bugged out the Mount Weather to run the country uh, as the in the model of what the New World Order and the Bush Cabal wanted all along. But they're not going to get away with this. And I truly believe, and maybe by saying this on your broadcast, maybe that they will let her out of protective custody. I believe the FBI has her in protective custody at Mount Weather. I think she's been there for almost 48 hours. And I think if she was not in federal protective custody, she would have been dead by now. 
Yeah, I, 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 you are, you know what, you know what's killing me right now is that our show isn't seven hours long. Uh, we're going to a break. <laughs> I've just now booted our third guest also, our fourth guest also. <laughs> just, I've, I've, yeah, no, go ahead, Mick. You're not, I can hear you. I just, just, it's just fascinating. Yeah, I'm we're, we're, just... I've, I've booted guest number three. I've now booted guest number four. We're going to stay with Field. We're going to have Field back. And back, I mean, on the Caden Show right here on Revealing Talk Radio. Um, I don't talk, Field, just so you know, I don't talk to Mick much about some of the things that I know. He just catches it as we do shows. Um this is, by the way, I'm sorry to announce that this is Mick's last show. <laughs> oh, I'm all broken up. Look. <laughs> so, okay, little levity there kind of gets us back in the mood. Feel, oh. feel, take me, take me through what you were just last talking about. You're saying the election could possibly be delayed until Jan- January 3rd, and it's because she could be arrested. Now, keep in mind, I am a big believer that Julian Assange is simply a wild card. He's not a Jesuit. He's not a Knight of Malta or a Columbus or anything else. He is the one thing they weren't counting on. And he has promised in the last few days that he is going to release some evidence, some emails that will get her elected. And this is a guy who keeps his promises. Are you feeling it's something to do with that feel? Did you just say we'll get her elected or we'll prevent I'm, her? I'm sorry. I said I meant to say we'll get her arrested. Yes, I think she should be arrested. And that's why uh, I brought up the fact that on the 21st of August of 2014, I released all this information in an open courtroom in Ellsworth, uh, which is Pierce County, Wisconsin. And the judge, uh, I'm not making this up. This is so un professional i can't believe it the judge put his hands over his ears and said too much information you're excused uh, oh that doesn't see, that doesn't surprise me he doesn't want to be left with the decision well not only that he doesn't want it entered on the record but now that i've contacted the fbi last night and the new york city police department and i have told them that i i exposed christine marcy huma abedin and hillary clinton and their pedophile abuse of underage females, I, I put that out in the courtroom two and a half years ago. So uh, it may be coming to the surface now. Uh, and do, you believe that, do, you, do you believe there's a coup going on in the FBI right now, basically? Well, I believe there's two coups that are going on. Uh, yes, the, the coup in the FBI, I mentioned earlier that 98% of any organization is good, but the senior executive people at the top take it sideways and constrain uh, the other coup that's going on, and I know that we're just about out of time, but it's my belief that General Joseph Dunford, who is the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, has been the de facto president of the United States at some date uh, no later than September of this year. Now, do you and mean that, like when you say that, do you mean uh, like a military vicar? Yes, I think the military has taken control of this country. And the only reason it's not publicly known is the vast majority of the 330 million Americans that have been fluorided to death and given public educations might get very nervous and antsy. And so calm and order have to be maintained. But if, uh, if, you, if you and your listeners have not heard it anywhere else, let me repeat, I think it's entirely possible that Hillary will be arrested this week. I think it's entirely possible the elections will be postponed from the 8th of November till the 3rd of January. And if that happens, uh, some element of credit would go to abledanger.net, which, by the way, is not me. I'm just one of the people in it. And there's people that that, uh, think I have a bigger position than I do. But I'm a private individual, 67-year-old guy that just happened to go to Annapolis, just happened to go to Punahou, just happened to understand John McCain, just happens to understand Obama, who's really Barry Swatero, and I just happened to have been watching Arkansas since 1967, and I've seen nothing out of Arkansas, at least of a political nature, and I'm not political, I'm just observant. But the Clinton family, the Rockefeller family, George Soros and his ilk, uh, the Liebermans, uh, the McCains of the world, and Graham Lindsay, or Lindsey Graham, these people are a bunch of treasonous B-scale actors, and we're going to expose them all, and I believe we have. You want to know why I didn't interrupt him just then? Why? 
because it would be rude to interrupt someone when they're speaking the truth. I was just going to say that. (laughs) I mean, I just want to keep going, buddy. Um, Yeah, the... um, the situation right now with this with this potential arrest, I would not surprise me in the least. I, I feel like, okay, let me just go ahead and say what we're going to do. I'm just going to say it now. I have so many people that are clamoring to get on this show next Wednesday, the day after the quote-unquote election. I'm not kidding you. I, I cannot believe how many people I've had requesting airtime to get on this show. Um, I'm not going to announce a single guest until the morning of. We're not, we're not doing it. I want to wait and see what happens with this potential arrest of Hillary Clinton. If they arrest Hillary Clinton, they're going to need a fleet of buses because there are so many other people they would have to arrest. It's just not even funny. You'd have to arrest the entire board of the Clinton Foundation half of the DOJ, a lot of people from the DOD, that's Department of Justice and Department of Defense, for those of you who aren't aware of it. Uh, Bill Bill would have to be elect, uh, elected. Why do I keep saying elected? Arrested. Maybe because being elected is being arrested. Um, and then, yeah, and Steph just held up a sign at me. Get ready for martial law. I mean, we're all right. Technically, for those of you who don't know, and poor Mick, I don't think he can take much more. For those of you who don't know, we are already under military law as it is. And if you would like proof of that, walk into any government building or courtroom and tell me what surrounds the flag. Gold fringe. Gold fringe, my friend Field just said. Gold fringe means military law. That's Admir- what it Admiralty law. Ad, thank you. Admiral Admiralty law. When you walk into a courtroom under the 66 million statutes that they have in this country and Mick, you better have memorized them all. Everyone. You are under their law, not the constitution period. Not going to argue with anybody. You're not under the constitution at that point. That's why in, 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 in Mick's great state of Colorado, very, very guilty of this particular one. If you walk into a court in Colorado, anywhere really in the U.S., and you say exhibit one or A or B or C or Z or triple D, it doesn't matter. If you walk in and say exhibit blah, 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 Constitution of the United States of America, it will not be allowed. So for those of you, as I'm trying to summarize some things here before we go and field, I'm going to get you back in here to try to give some light because we've been all over the map here today on a lot of different topics. And a lot of listeners are probably going, what is going on? I mean, it's like, you know, it's like fireworks going off inside your head. Let me, let me just summarize a few things for you. So you understand that what field is saying is not out there. It's not even remotely close to out there. Okay. Okay. The law you're under right now was hijacked on March 9th, 1933. FDR. Okay. Equity law went away. Statutory law came in. They kind of quote unquote merged them. You've got the Emergency Banking Powers Act. You've got the uh, Trading with the Enemy Act. You've got the Federal Reserve Act. All of these things. We're talking 1912, 1913, 1917, 1933. When these things all work together like a little cocktail, it means you don't have constitutional rights because you are a public citizen. You are a corporate document. You are a bond. You are surety. You are not the living person, the natural man. All right? I'm blowing my listeners away right now because they have never heard me talk like this. I'm, I'm, I feel, field had guts enough to talk. I'm going to talk. Here it goes. When you were born, your birth certificate was sold to the Federal Reserve by the Treasury through the Commerce Department, not the Health Department. That was mixed ice cubes. He's just finished his scotch. Sorry. Um, <laughs> that, that, <laughs> it's okay, man. It's okay, man. <laughs> that, that birth certificate was sold 
to the Federal Reserve for $1.4 million in bundles of 50. That means you and 49 of your friends you've never met were sold for $1.4 million a piece. This goes to the Federal Reserve where you become collateral. You now are collateral for debt, and they make a lot of money off of you. So when you're walking around thinking you're a person, I would ask you to look up the U.S. definition, U.S. legal law definition of the word person, and you will find that the first definition is corporation, and the second definition is human being, which you are not. You are have to do a release of surety before you could ever be a human being again. Because your parents in a delivery room, when your mother and mother only signed papers, gave you, created you as a volunteer surety so that you could become surety for that corporate bond. Look at your birth certificate. Look at it, people. You are a bond. Look at it. Fine print, American Bond Company, or one of the others. You are surety for debt. You are trading fiat money that is based on that same system. So if you think for one minute that anything Field McConnell has said here today is outrageous, you need to do your homework. He's not saying anything outrageous. Field, go ahead. Yes, I just want to, I was going to correct you. I didn't have to. You corrected yourself. You said when the parents were in the delivery room. Uh, actually, it's only the mother that is That is correct. That. that is correct. Yes, and also, you didn't mention it, but as long as you brought up this subject, uh, there's a term, glossa, G-L-O-S-S-A. Have you heard of that yes. before? Y- yes, sir, I have, sir. Yes, sir, go ahead. Okay, tell well, our then, listeners, tell our listeners. We, we only have glossa. about a minute, so go ahead. I'll do it quickly. Glossa is when they put your name like Bob Smith, all in capital letters, capital B, capital O, capital B, then Smith in caps. That means you're a corporation. Correct. If you get any legal documents from the IRS, they're always in capitals, and they're always considering you a corporation, and they're always lying to you. The IRS is a private corporation. The profits uh, that come from the IRS go directly to England. The uh, corporate headquarters, and it is a corporation, uh, the IRS corporate headquarters is in Guayabo, G-U-A-Y-A-B-O, Puerto Rico. Correct. And yeah, and you do not have to. You can uh, you can uh, elect to disengage from the IRS. It's a legal procedure. It's the IRS's own procedure. But you'll never have an attorney or an accountant tell you that. Okay. Okay. It, okay. Okay. Right there. That is a promo for our next show. <laughs> if, if, unless we're talking about arrests or Hillary or something else field honestly if I had three more hours we could not get it all in guys I am so sorry that we have to cut this short we're not cutting it short I'm sorry I have to, I have to cut field off field thanks so much for being our guest today I will uh, contact you as soon as we get off air uh, for our listeners whoa for Mick sorry for Stephanie <laughs> love you Feature Story News in Washington.